This is the nerve center of the theater. This is our green room, which is actually green. They're doing Annie, so they have all these makeup shots, figuring out uh, how they should make themselves up. And they, everyone has their box with all their personal effects. There's props and everything. These are Z-Racks. Every single person in the cast, and it's a cast of over 40. It wasn't really until my junior year in college that I really discovered, wow, there was a visiting professor that cast me as a Wyatt Earp character in a Wild West sort of a, a drama. And that changed everything. When I got to graduate school, which I decided to try, Shakespeare then changed everything because I was a dyslexic kid who didn't learn to read till I was going into sixth grade. This is the cast of Annie, everybody. Hey, do you have to uh, say hi to... Uh, <laughs> So I basically performed my way through high school, and when I got to graduate school, I had an amazing professor, the most famous Shakespeare scholar in the world, Bert Joseph, and he taught me to read really and to write, and my vocabulary through Shakespeare really grew. And I guess the next thing was being in London. Um, after teaching college for a couple of years, I decided that all the actors I was directing, they were having much more fun than I was having, so I auditioned, got into the London Academy in England, and that is where I developed my ability to use voices in all sorts of different ways and, and to really work on my face. This is the NYT shop. It needs to be three times as large as this because we produce huge shows. But we do have all the paint brushes and many types of paints. You see the bunk beds for Annie and all the wash buckets and stuff like that. And there's a big door that uh, takes everything right out onto the stage. Actually, you'll come backstage here and you can see. And then Clown School with Montanero in 78 just blew the doors off of everything. And then in 1980 with the Vermont Arts Council, I started my career. I actually started my career as a clown in 78 with the Arts Council's help. And then with Gould in 1980, the wreaths that are going to be placed on the stage, uh, the furniture, uh, <laughs> Uh, wiring for phone ringings and period phones and we just do it just about like they do it at the big time. Everything is absolute period. Everything's painted, uh, in this case Art Deco and the whole thing, this whole thing opens up. And then I started this thing and I tried it out for two summers in the woods with kids. Uh, Treasure Island and the other one was uh, Robin Hood. We did it in the woods, the kids built forts. I got up more excited in the morning than I'd ever been in my life about anything and I said this is obviously it. So I just took that and put up a notice for Midsummer Night's Dream. 35 kids showed up. I didn't have any idea how to cast them. I didn't have name tags or anything. If my wife hadn't been there, I wouldn't have even known what to do. The scenery opens up like that and and then this opens up and the whole thing <laughs> turns into Daddy Warbucks estate and eventually I got some backers. I stood in this particular place. I stood right over there when this was just a gutted warehouse and I stood up on a dumpster and gave a speech. I could picture exactly where everything was. I said, you know, there's going to be the booth and there's going to be the classrooms and, and people were like, and I could see the entire thing as though it were laid out in front of me. 150 seats, started with six lights when we began and now we've got over 200 lights and we've got tracks which take things, we've got travelers, we've got scrims, uh, everything that we just about need, balconies, booth, everybody can wear headsets. So we have several mottos. One is leap and the net will appear. And the net is your fellow performers who are going to give you a line. They're going to save you, whatever. We can put a band off to the side, which we're doing now. So that's pretty much. I'll take you uh, to a classroom and I'll show you some activities if you want. Come on, come on. The energy of the kids, even if the skills aren't there yet or at the highest level, it's always fabulously exciting. We don't allow ourselves to get out of the realm of infinite possibilities. My disability has taught me that whenever things are really bad, that's good. I always say that's good because that's going to springboard you into some place of ah. Oh, 
and working with a group of kids with trust, permission, and commit through the ever-changing world of interesting, that's what I do. Come and come and do something in the come and do something in the rose room with me for just okay, a moment, okay? The thing that Vermont has going for it is an amazing, probably per capita in the United States, the strongest collective of artists and thinkers and writers and experimenters and entrepreneurs. And Vermont is the, a small enough place that it's not that difficult to know different people and to network and connect, which is why it's been so inspiring for me. Ah, whoosh, it's just this side. Figure out some way to pass it that's interesting. Bing! I like to say NYT is of kids, by kids, for kids, run by kids with the best professional mentorship we can find. We also teach heart, mind, body, voice. We, in, we teach the, the sign of the four, the heart, mind, body, voice, and the kids learn skills. And I tell them, if you're not as good yet as you're going to be, learn some skills, and we just move them up the ladder. And it doesn't matter what they can pay or not, but money's usually the biggest challenge because we have to heat the place, of course. We have to light it. We have to pay everybody. We're going to build a scene right here, so if you can step in, okay? Uh, let's have a place. Times Square. <laughs> Times Square, okay. You jump in and you say, I am a, and, and then everybody will jump in and make a tableau of what you are, okay? I'm a traffic cop. <laughs> <laughs> Not very good. Right? The dogs are really angry drivers. I'm the sign. <laughs> I'm the Dumbotron. <laughs> I'm gum everywhere. I'm the Empire State Building. Oh. I'm the Statue of Liberty. I feel like I'm living inside my dream. I had this idea. Who knew? So many people, and, and these kids everywhere. These kids that have just come and jumped on this bandwagon, and everybody's picked up something. I, could, I couldn't be any happier if I had all the money in the world. But fortunately, I mean, I, I set myself a goal to make a couple million dollars a few years ago. And I have made more than that. It just hasn't come to me. It's just come to this organization, which I think is all the better because if you can help a lot of people get what they want, then you can have some of what you want. And that's kind of where I live my life. Everybody working together. Um, hey, what can be better than that?